Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimzeski with Adam Atkinson, episode six, I think we're in. I always start to forget when we get up to these higher numbers, Adam. I should keep like a little abacus by my computer. Uh, <laughs> but we're gonna talk about non-exercise activity thermogenesis now and the impact it has on metabolism. So this is kind of the darling of the industry right now. Everybody loves talking about this. Even some of the top researchers note that as we diet, as we get into that calorie deficit and, and we're starting to just feel the effects of dieting, it's only natural for our normal daily activities to just kind of wind down. So all of a sudden, you're just not walking around as much. You want to sit down more. You, you might even just start, I mean, just metabolically, even, even without you knowing it, like your body just starts conserving energy. But non-exercise activity thermogenesis is the bulk of our metabolism outside of just our normal basal metabolic rate even if you were just lying down all day those movements that you do all day long matter the most so are you seeing adam in the way you communicate this with clients just talking about hey get up and move around maybe you do you know don't count this as cardio but maybe you just want to walk around a little bit more park in the back of the parking lot take the stairs do you do you find yourself giving that advice now yeah, you know where this comes up a lot is with my moms, and some of them will get tired, and they're like, I feel awful because I don't want to play with my kid right now because I'm tired. And, and that's like one of the best examples of need. And, and I tell them, I'm like, just to let you know, every time you don't do that, you have a chance at not losing body fat. So by all means, for the sake of your kid and your crap. Yeah, and your kids are going to hate you. Yeah, exactly. So, and, uh, you know, I even think of that stuff when I take my dogs on walks and stuff, they really look forward to getting out of the house. And, you know, even if I am tired and dieting, I actually feel better after I go do those things anyhow. So it's really important to keep those things in. You almost have to trick yourself or talk yourself into doing them. Just like sometimes waking up in the morning is hard for people. And you see that with people for prep. The, I think it's good they're sleeping more, but if they were waking up at 5 a.m. versus like 11 a.m., that's a big difference. I have a guy who's laid off right now, and that's exactly what he's doing. And I said, I like that you're sleeping for recovery, but maybe let's wake up at nine instead of 11, you know, get up and start doing something, maybe do some cardio. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, because this has become such a focus in the industry, I, I find some coaches even having clients track their steps and, you know, that gold standard of 10,000 steps a day or something. It's like, you know, here's your training, here's your, your prescriptive cardio but we still have to keep neat high and here's how we can do it. Make sure you got these steps in, make sure if you work a desk job, you know, every 50 minutes you stand up and walk around for five minutes, you know, anything you can do just to stay more active because we, we lose consciousness of that. We don't realize how much more we're sitting around, but over the course of three, six months of dieting, you know, that can add up to several pounds. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's just good for, for your clients to be active and, you know, break the monotony of being at their desk. Their pro productivity usually goes up when they do that as well. And it, it just all around works best for everyone. I've thought often about tracking steps with clients, but I always like to bring that out with communication. I like to leave some variables open so then it gives us more to discuss so then it's just not so robotic you send me this sheet and that's it mm -hmm. you know i i gave a lecture alongside i think it's dr bainbridge i it'd be funny if i actually got that right but uh, i was in tasmania he teaches exercise science at the university of tasmania and uh, his whole lecture was on this because it's it's so impactful in overall metabolism and, and again I, I do think it's one of the most uh, important things or the biggest things that we can have impact on. And uh, he, he went through the stats and, and, you know, he kind of went through a case study of if this is this person and this is this person, you know, they take the elevator, they take the stairs, they park by the door, they park in the back of this. I mean, it, it can be a couple hundred calories a day before you know it. And, and that can be a wide margin between losing and not losing. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. 
All right, guys, thanks for tuning in again. We're going to come back with at least one more episode, I think. We've got at least one in us on this topic to wrap it up, Adam, but we will be uh, finishing up maximizing metabolism next in Contest Prep University.